Steve, so Los Lobos is going to be at the Blues Festival once again. Long time, huh? Indeed. Yes. Too long. How long? Too long. <laughs> Were you living here then? I don't believe I was living here. I think I was on my way here, but I don't think I quite arrived yet. So that's what probably a good part of it. I've been here for nine years. Yeah. So it might have been like nine years ago, maybe two. So you were thinking about moving here. I was thinking about it. It was in my, I, I had it I had it sighted. I had just had lined it up. <laughs> what was it that brought you? I mean, why, 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 did you, why did you, obviously, why did you move here is the question. Well, I was living in Seattle on an island, uh -huh. uh, Bachelon Island to be exact. And um, we had been there, my wife and I and my kids, for 16 years, and that's a long time to be on an island. You know, it's a wonderful place, yeah. don't get me wrong, but it was, it was just getting smaller and smaller and smaller yeah. and smaller. And, uh, you know, Seattle, don't need to, it's not news to anybody, they have their own civic issues there. Yes. And they were certainly making, you know, life um, for island dwellers more miserable by the moment. Like oh. Cutting service, raising prices. Uh, so it was time to leave, and we were looking in Seattle, but... We just, we'd always love coming here. Every time we play here, we'd always you know, bring the family down. So we just kind of mm -hmm. mm -hmm. thought it we're ready for a little bit of a different experience. Yeah. And yeah. We, uh, we love it here. Great. Um, so, uh, have you been out with the band lately? Yeah, yeah, we just got back. We were in, uh, in LA over the weekend. How, how is that different now? I mean, you've been, you guys have been together so long. I mean, it must be, it, is everything still, un, I mean, is still, are things unspoken now? Pretty much, yeah. You know, yeah. we uh, hardly even talk to one another, really. It's like, <laughs> we've heard every conversation, there's really nothing to talk about. You know, we just, we don't even really say hi that much. It's just sort of like we show up and play and split, you know, it's, it's kind of weird, I gotta tell you. It's not, it's, it's unusual, but, you know, we know, we, you know, everybody loves each other, we have each other's backs, it's just like, we don't really need to talk about very many things. Yeah. We, you know, we haven't done anything new for a while, so we don't really rehearse anymore. So really, it's just you know the it's um, you know we sort of just go about our, our our business you know certainly you know I know everybody's looking forward to the, the blues festival you know, we have a lot of good friends here um, the guys love coming up here so that'll be fun um, but uh, yeah it's uh, you know as far as like a marriage you know it's like you know, after a while you know it's like you talk about you know if new events occur but well, you know you don't need to rehash the old stuff you know. It's, <laughs> 30-year-old conversation, for God's sake, yeah, it's... Um, but no new material. Well, you know, it's our 40th anniversary. Yeah. So we decided, I think wisely, that there's no way we could make a new record that would say... You know, we tried that on the 30th anniversary, actually. Yeah. Uh, so that there's no way to really say, well, here's 40 years worth of stuff in Capsule. Like, every record we do is that. Yeah. But we couldn't... We didn't want to put the, uh, the pressure on ourselves or the material. Uh -huh to try and come up with something that would represent that effectively. So we came up with this idea of, of going back in the catalog and, and redoing some stuff, as we call it, disconnected, which is not to say acoustic. It's acoustic guitars, but with electric bass and loud drums. So they're, the songs are in a different setting, although to say, you know, it's not quite unplugged or whatever that's come to mean. So it's uh, it's a little different. I'm not sure, you know, to be honest with you, I don't know if we're going to do that here. You know, we, we sort of have to... Uh, much like our acoustic show, we have to kind of gear up for those tours and, and we have to bring very specific instruments which are much harder to travel with, as you might imagine. So yeah. I think, if I'm not mistaken, the Portland show here is just a one-off. We're, we're not working before or after it, uh -huh. so I think it's just going to be a rock show, uh -huh. which will be fun. Uh -huh. When you do the acoustic show, do you, do you also um, bring the sax? Oh, yeah. 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 The sax and, and keyboards and a lot of that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Baritone saxophone players seem to be different from other saxophone players. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> is Cooler, it, I'd is, say. Better, better looking. Have. Yeah, there you go. Better lovers. Yeah, it, is, it, it's, it's like the the physical nature of having to play that big instrument seems to seems to put baritone players apart. Yeah. It's. I think it's more like how you hear, you know, because it's. Uh, it's like I know. The more I play it, the less I hear. Like when I, ideas come to me, I hear them in baritone. They come, they don't come to me. They don't sound like tenor voices or God knows soprano or alto. They come, mm -hmm. I hear them in that voice. So it's like much like a singer. Mm -hmm. If you're a baritone, that's how you hear stuff. If you're yeah. a soprano, that's how you hear stuff. So I, yeah. I think I kind of hear that way. And I would say if I had a character, even though we're not singing, yeah. my fellow baritone players would sort of hear like you, you hear the world differently. Kind of like bass players, but not quite the same. You know, you just 
you hear music and you, you think about the low end first. You know? Yeah. How is it different from bass players? I mean, obviously it's not percussive, well, but in a way it is. You're you're married to your drummer or the rhythm section to a yeah. certain extent, and your 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 work is more supportive than what we get to do. You know, like yeah. we're either playing parts or soloing, so it's not. It's a different set of responsibilities. Yeah. But how the world sounds to you is different. I think. Yeah. yeah. I've always thought that that. Uh, uh, having a baritone sax in a band makes all the difference in the world. I agree. <laughs> you know, and, and I don't. It's I, I really don't think that that, uh, that the baritone sax has ever really gotten its due because it's a keystone of rock and roll for sure. It certainly and R and B. R and B, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it it seems to be now somewhat in fashion. There's a guy, uh, Colin Stetson, who seems to be everywhere all at once. So. Yeah. I mean, I hope he doesn't burn it out for everybody, you know, <laughs> being so visible. But, it, yeah. you know, I think it's a great rock and roll instrument, certainly. You know, it's, yeah. we've, you know, love us, you know, we use it a lot. I mean, it just kind of fits because it works with, you know, you could, sonically, it, it, it melts well with electric guitars. Because yeah. you sort of fill up the, from the D string down, and most, you know, rock guitar players aren't really playing, you know, first position chords anymore. So they're yeah. all up the neck and you're, yeah. you get to play yeah. under them. But for the consumer, it gets you right in the middle of the chest. Boom. Well, it's done right, yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, I, you, you, are, who are you producing these days? Uh, who aren't I producing? Well, okay. Uh, who, I, I, like, let's see. Uh, in uh, town here, I'm producing uh, the Rosaline Hunters, which has been a blast. I love those guys. What a great uh, band. Amazing band. They are, are amazing. Um, band. And I did a record with them backing up a singer named Jackie Green, who I believe has been to the Blues Festival a couple uh -huh. times. Uh, not this uh -huh. year, though. Um, and then I'm also working with um, a fellow named Josh Malm, who has a band called uh, Redwood Sun, which is yeah. mostly him. Chance Hayden's in that band. Yeah, Chance yeah. is in there. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's been uh, that's been a lot of fun. And uh, I'm just really starting to work with this band, Old Light. I'm just sort of working on a bunch of cool ideas with those guys, who are mm -hmm. great, amazing, truly underappreciated and amazing band. That yeah. uh, I hope good things will happen too. Yeah. Yeah, the Roseland Hunters are right about ready. They're right about ready, I, don't you think? You know, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're they're yeah. such great musicians. Uh, That's the thing. They're <laughs> unbelievable, literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Reinhardt, of course, Mr. Odd Meter. Yes, I, I threw him some bones and he, he <laughs> swallowed them. I, I have to say, it's just like I had a couple of crazy meter ideas, and he was like, he was so oh, all over. He was right there, yeah. He was so happy, and somebody <laughs> spoke his language. I love that stuff. I, yeah. you know, to me, it's like that's. I love taking you know one beat out of a bar every once in a while. Yeah. And he's a, quite a perfectionist, also. Oh, he's quite a perfectionist. Yeah, yeah. In the best possible, I've, I've worked with annoying perfectionists, and he's a, a non-annoying perfectionist. He's a he's a he's the right kind of perfectionist. Yeah, I know. I was talking to Bobby Torres, who has tons and tons of stuff that that are recorded that he thinks is ready to go, and Reinhardt goes, "No, no, it's not ready yet." No. Well, Reinhardt's probably right. Yeah. <laughs> probably. Yeah. And of, of, of course, Damien Erskine. What can you say? You know, truly unbelievable. And you know, Mike's no slouch either. So no, Mike's no slouch. Yeah. It's uh, it's a pretty great band. It's been a lot of fun too, because a lot of it has been taking stuff that they've done mm -hmm. and just kind of like um, making it more concise. You might say. I mean, like with, with players like that, it's very easy to uh, over, like, I won't say overwrite, but just sprawl. Like yeah. things tend to get wider yeah. than. I think they. I think it's better when the energy is focused. So I've just been taking like long solos and making them really awesome shorter solos mm -hmm. or sections of songs that kind of meander a little bit, just sort of taking out the meandering. Yeah. So it's it's been it's a lot of fun because a lot of it's very experimental. Like I have no idea if it's going to work or not when I you know uh -huh. until I get in there and start cutting it up. It's like so yeah. far the batting average is pretty high. Well, the amazing thing is that they let you do that. It is amazing, but it, yeah. I would have to, you know, it's one of those things where, like, we found each other, I think, at the exact right time. Like, they, I don't know if, like, a year ago or whatever, it would have been, my ideas would have been as, mm -hmm. you know, succinct for them, and or they were ready, you know, and willing to do it. But it, it seems like, I, I mean, I, I'm even surprised myself that a lot of it, the idea, because, you know, they just, they're kind of crazy. Like, you know, cutting one yeah. beat out of every other bar yeah. on a song where they're singing is like, that's not going to work, is it? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Well, listen, we're all looking forward to seeing Los Lobos at the Blues Festival. And, looking forward to and being please here. stop by the Oregon Music News comfy booth. It's the most comfortable place on the, the entire festival. I'll come there and sprawl. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you.